This animal can grow to the size of your dog. These are super giant isopods, and unfortunately for anyone with thalassophobia, they're real. In fact, when scientists pulled one up off the coast of West Java in 2018, this freak of crustaceans was so unfathomably large that at first the marine biologists literally thought it was a movie prop, but it was alive and moving. This is the size of a giant isopod, but this wasn't what the biologists found. The super giant isopod they pulled up was over triple the size of a normal giant isopod and over 40 times the size of regular isopods. To put that in comparison, imagine you're this average sized 5 foot 8 human being. Your super giant equivalent would be over 11 feet tall, shattering any Guinness World Records of even the wildest genetic anomalies. Yeah, these things are what you might call an absolute unit. But what is the advantage to growing to sizes this large? Could these isopods get even bigger than this? The creature the researchers pulled up was Barthinimus raxasa. The name raxasa comes from the Indonesian word for giant or monster, and it's honestly pretty easy to see why. But this isn't just a random oversized creature. It's part of a lineage that goes back over 300 million years, one of the oldest groups of crustaceans on Earth. Scientists quickly realized that Raxessa wasn't just a weird find. It was a newly described species of giant isopods. It belongs to the genus Barthinimus, deep sea giants of the isopod world. Compared to them, most isopods are actually tiny. For example, the common rough woodlouse rarely grows longer than 1 to 2 centimeters, and the Antarctic isopod, it barely reaches over an inch. But these deep sea dudes grow much larger. Raxasa itself stretches nearly 19.5 inches from head to tail, making it the second largest isopod ever discovered, while Barthinimus giganteus takes the number one position by reaching up to 21 inches. That's 20 to 50 times bigger than an average terrestrial arthropod. So why did some of these tiny creatures evolve into monsters? The deep sea world creates an environment a lot different to anything we see on land. The temperatures over there are freezing cold. Just below a thousand meters, the sunlight stops penetrating, making it a region of perpetual darkness. And you can already imagine the amount of food without sunlight for photosynthesis. It looks like a death recipe for any animal, yet alone for a small isopod. But there is an upside to it as well. With few predators and slow, steady metabolism, there's room for growth. A bigger body means more energy storage and the ability to travel longer distances in search of a meal. In other words, the deep sea rewards size. This phenomenon even has a name, deep sea gigantism, and it's not unique to isopods. Some amphipods can reach over 12 inches, and deep sea squids, like the giant squid that we made a video about here, can grow over 12 meters long. But among isopods, only a few species, like Raxasa and Giganteus, have pushed the limits to such extremes. This is where deep sea gigantism comes in. In the freezing depths, colder temperatures slow an animal's metabolism, allowing it to live longer and grow larger. Scarcity of food also favors size, since bigger bodies can store more energy and survive longer between meals. Over millions of years, natural selection pushed this lineage towards bigger and bigger sizes, producing monsters like Raxasa. But how exactly did Raxasa get so big compared to the other giant isopods? As I mentioned earlier, its lineage goes back to over 300 million years ago, up to the Carboniferous period. And when the small, scavenging ancestors ventured into deep, cold waters, natural selection pushed the lineage towards bigger and bigger sizes, producing monsters like Raxasa. But this got scientists into some serious thinking. If the extreme conditions at 2,000 meters can transform a tiny 1 to 2 centimeter isopod into a 50 centimeter giant, 25 times its original size, it's not hard to wonder what could happen even deeper. Could the same evolutionary pressures push creatures even larger? Could there be undiscovered isopods or other arthropods towering over even Rakshusha? To answer that, we need to think about the limits of arthropod growth and the lessons from both the distant past and the deep sea today. Let's start with the history. During the Carboniferous period, the Earth was a very different place. Oxygen levels in the atmosphere were far higher than they are now, sometimes reaching 35% compared to today's 21%. This rich oxygen environment allowed arthropods to grow to staggering sizes. Take Meganua, for instance, a dragonfly-like insect with a wingspan of around 70 centimeters. Imagine a dragonfly the size of a small crow buzzing through the ancient forests. Or consider Arthopluria, a millipede-like arthropod that could stretch over 2.5 meters long, 
the largest known land invertebrate in Earth's history. These ancient giants thrived because their bodies could absorb enough oxygen to support massive tissues, a feat tiny insects today simply cannot achieve under current atmospheric conditions. Fast forward to the present day. Oxygen levels are lower and atmospherical and ecological conditions have changed, putting a hard cap on how big terrestrial arthropods can get. A dragonfly today might reach 10 centimeters at most, and millipedes generally max out around 30 centimeters. On land, size is constricted by air, predation, and metabolic demands. But as discussed earlier, the deep sea tells a different story. The environment slows metabolism, meaning animals use less energy and can survive on less meals. Predators are few too, which reduces the threat of being eaten. And, unlike on land, buoyancy and water pressure allow invertebrates to grow without being crushed under their own weight. This is why deep sea gigantism exists, and creatures like Bartholomus raxasa and its close relative Bartholomus giganteus can grow so big, even without the high oxygen levels that fueled Carboniferous giants. It's also precisely one of the reasons why Raxas's discovery was shocking for experts. Until 2018, Bartholomus giganteus was the biggest name in the giant isopod world, the record holder in the deep Atlantic near the Americas. Then Raxasa showed up in the Indian Ocean off southern Java, roughly 15,000 kilometers away, pushing to the almost same monstrous size. How could two species so far apart end up near identical giants? Experts think that it's a sign evolution doesn't just mess around, it follows a pattern. When different species face the same brutal pressures, they can often land on the same solution. So if a 1 to 2 centimeter creature can grow to 50 centimeters at 2000 meters, what about 3000 or 4000 meters? The deep sea continues to get colder, darker, and even more isolated. Hypothetically, if evolutionary pressures remain consistent, low predation, scarce food, and cold temperatures, there's no strict reason why we couldn't see even larger isopods or other arthropods adapted to these extreme depths. And in fact, there have been unconfirmed reports of supergiant isopods reaching nearly 70 centimeters in length, about 27 inches. This is literally bigger than some mid-sized dogs. Whether those individuals were true outliers, a separate species, or simply exaggerations, it shows just how close these animals already are to the absolute extremes of arthropod size. What makes this even more interesting is how little of the ocean we've actually explored. With over 80% of the world's ocean unobserved by humans, possibilities of even larger creatures are not unrealistic by any means. Could we imagine an isopod that approaches a meter in length, even bigger than us? Comparing this to the Carboniferous, there's a parallel in principle. Back then, high oxygen allowed arthropods to grow bigger. In the deep sea today, environmental conditions substitute for oxygen, allowing some species to stretch their limits. In both cases, size is a response to the environment, and the more extreme the environment, the more extreme the adaptations. Of course, there are limits. The deep sea is not infinitely forgiving. Water pressure rises about one atmosphere every 10 meters of depth. At 4,000 meters, creatures endure 400 atmospheres, or roughly 400 times the pressure at the surface. Life must have adaptations to avoid being crushed, and metabolism must remain balanced. Plus, food scarcity increases the challenge. An animal too large might require more energy than the seafloor can provide. But the mere existence of Raxasa proves that evolution can push the boundaries further than we might expect. And we need to remember that we barely explored the oceans. Most of it deeper than 2,000 meters is unexplored. Every expedition uncovers new species, many of them bizarre and oversized. Just the 2018 expedition that found Raksasa spent 14 days exploring the ocean. The joint team of Singaporean and Indonesian scientists explored 63 sites, sometimes reaching depths of 2,100 meters. They recovered around 12,000 marine animals representing 800 species yet only one stood apart. Raxasa might be just one example of what's possible. But at what size do these isopods become actual threats? You might have seen this clip before, but yes, that's an isopod taking down a shark. Obviously, your average pill bug isn't going to be pulling that off. But unlike predatory monsters we often imagine, giant isopods aren't naturally hunters. They're scavengers, perfectly engineered to survive so deep underwater. Raxasa has 14 jointed legs that allow it to crawl effortly across soft, silty ocean floors. Its segmented, armored exoskeleton acts like a living tank, rigid enough to withstand the crushing pressures of the deep while remaining flexible enough to protect it from the occasional predator. Its helmet-like head and overlapping plates give it a near-indestructible silhouette. 
making it look like an armored alien moving silently through the darkness. Then there are the eyes. They're massive, but not like normal eyes of land creatures. They're designed to detect the faintest glimmers of light in complete darkness. Even the soft glow of a decomposing whale carcass, what scientists call a whale fall, can trigger a feeding frenzy. In these moments, Raksasa becomes a master of efficiency. It's armored, stealthy, and optimized for survival in an environment where meals are rare and unpredictable. In fact, when a whale dies and sinks, it becomes a multi-year buffet for scavengers. A single carcass can support hundreds of organisms, including crabs, hagfish, worms, and isopods. Our giant Raksasa will also crawl over the carcass, picking off flesh, burrowing into softer tissues, and using its powerful mandibles to shred through meat and cartilage. Remarkably, these isopods can swallow portions far larger than their heads, thanks to their flexible stomach and strong jaws. One meal like this can sustain them for months or even years until the next feeding opportunity drifts down from above. This extreme survival strategy is precisely why deep sea isopods grow so large. A bigger body allows more energy storage, enabling them to traverse greater distances in search of scarce meals. It also gives them the stamina to survive long stretches without food. One of the most famous examples comes from Japan, where a giant isopod named Number One gained notoriety for its extraordinary hunger strike, which we made a video about here. Kept in captivity at a public aquarium, Number One was actually a supergiant isopod, Barthinimus giganteus. It refused food for over five years, surviving entirely on its stored fat. Scientists were amazed, observing a half meter long creature endure a period without eating that would kill any other animal. It's tempting to imagine these guys just getting bigger and bigger until one day we discover an isopod the size of a whale. But unfortunately for those who want to see some really cool sea monsters, that's probably not going to happen. Arthropods aren't built like vertebrates. Their exoskeletons, respiratory systems, and energy needs all set natural limits. Past a certain point, growing larger becomes a disadvantage, not an advantage. That said, these supergiant variations of isopods could point to other species also having supergiants. Raxasa was only discovered in 2018, and Yucatanesis in 2022, proof that the deep sea is still full of surprises. We already know of deep sea amphipods the size of your hand, squids that reach more than 12 meters, and even a colossal jellyfish with bells wider than a person is tall. Chances are actually way more likely that there's other giants we haven't discovered down there. And while you're at it, you could check out the video we made about giant squids here.